This pilot made a terrible mistake and now a father and a son are dead and this debrief was a little frustrating because something like this never should have happened. Now, the NTSB said that the probable cause was the pilot's exceedance of the airplane's critical angle of attack during the initial climb, which resulted in an aerodynamic stall. Now that's a very common theme that we see with a lot of these mishaps, but the real learning in the debrief happens when we start to look at the contributing factors and try to determine the root cause. We wanna know why they stalled the aircraft and what was the terrible mistake they made that they could have easily avoided. By the way, my name is Hoover and welcome to your pilot debrief. And we're gonna start by taking a look at the video of the father and the son taking off right before they crashed. And pay attention to how slow they're climbing and I also want to warn you that the person filming this stopped recording for some reason just prior to the mishap, but I'll explain what happened in a second. The video stops right there, and the airport they're flying out of is Flying Oaks, which is located right here just to the west of Fort Worth. This is a private airstrip, and this image is turned around with North being towards the bottom of the screen, but they're departing from runway 15, and three different eyewitnesses reported that as they got near the departure end of the runway, the airplane appeared to get slow and started to roll to the right but then it made a turn to the left and the pilot appeared to lower the nose, which is what you want to do when you're trying to avoid a stall. But the left wing fell and it rolled hard left and entered a spin. And best as I can tell from looking at the wreckage photos, they crashed somewhere around here on this driveway. These are some of the pictures of the wreckage, and if you can't tell what type of aircraft this is, it's an Aronka Model 7 Champion, also known as the Champ, and you can see that it's made of a combination of wood, aluminum, and metal framing covered in fabric. This is a single engine light airplane with a high wing and tandem seating, and this father and the son were just trying to do some local flying on a Saturday morning. The son was only 18 years old and played high school football and he wanted to be a pilot someday. And some of the articles I read said that he would spend the weekends flying with his dad. The dad was a commercial airline pilot and he had almost 14,000 hours of flight time. And I think it's important to point out that just because you have a lot of hours, that doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. According to the investigation, the dad purchased the aircraft in May of 2021, which was about three months prior to the crash but his personal flight logs were not available for review and his experience in the accident airplane was not determined. Now, technically the Champ is supposed to be an easy aircraft to fly, but if you've never flown a tail dragger before, then it might take a little bit to get used to, especially if you have 14,000 hours of time flying nose wheel aircraft. You don't need a special rating to fly a tail dragger, but you do need an instructor's endorsement, which I think is why the NTSB should have dug a little deeper to at least try to determine the pilot's experience and what kind of training he had on this type of aircraft. And it really shouldn't have been that hard because the guy that he bought the airplane from was the guy that owned the airport. And even though the investigators interviewed him, there's zero details or information regarding the dad's experience flying this airplane or flying any other tail drag or aircraft for that matter. But what we do know from the investigation is that the tachometer showed 1,233.63 hours in February of 2020. The dad bought the aircraft in May of 2021. And then just two months later on July 7th, 2021, it had 1,272.7 hours. And at the time of the crash, it had 1,275.46 hours. So it seems like the dad maybe had only flown it for about two hours in the past month. So he might not have had a lot of experience in this type of aircraft at the time of the mishap. And that could have been a big contributing factor. According to one of the eyewitnesses and what the NTSB reported, the son was sitting in the front seat for the takeoff. And even though both seats have a set of flight controls, all of the instruments are in the front and the airplane is designed to be flown solo from the front seat and the passenger should be in the back or an instructor will sometimes be in the back seat for training flights. And a few people have speculated that it's possible that the dad might have been teaching his son to fly because according to one witness, he overheard them talking to other airport tenants and it sounded like the intent was an instructional flight. However, I'd argue that the seat that they're in is a very minor contributing factor that doesn't really change the outcome of this mishap. 
The reason that I don't think it matters where they're sitting is because first of all, this is an aircraft that you're supposed to learn to fly by the seat of your pants, meaning you should be looking outside and learning the feel of the aircraft instead of just staring at the instruments and focusing on specific airspeed numbers. Now, when you learn to fly this way, the speeds are gonna come naturally. And if you are an experienced pilot in the back seat, then you won't necessarily need to see those instruments right in front of you in order to fly. The other reason it doesn't matter if the dad is in the back is because the aircraft doesn't have a stall warning system or an AOA indicator because they're not required. So the only stall warning that they're gonna get is the feel of the aircraft, and you can get that regardless of what seat that you're in. And when it comes to the level of experience in this aircraft, the one thing that you don't see on the video is that according to witnesses, they had already tried to take off once before and got out of control and almost ground looped before they taxi back to try again. Now, in my opinion, this means that whoever was doing the takeoff just didn't have enough experience to keep the aircraft under control. On that second takeoff attempt, you can see right here that they're climbing out pretty slow, and that's because one of the mistakes they made was failing to consider the effect of density altitude on aircraft performance. This is a big contributing factor to the crash because the airport elevation is about 720 feet above sea level, but when they take off, it's 27 degrees Celsius with about 80% humidity, and that means the aircraft is gonna perform like it's taking off from an airport at 2,600 feet. The warmer temperature and the higher humidity mean the air is less dense, and that means you're gonna have less power, less lift, you're gonna need a longer takeoff roll, and you're gonna have a smaller rate of climb. This is just basic pilot stuff that you need to be thinking about anytime it's hot outside or you're taking off from a higher elevation airport. Even a small change in the elevation or the temperature can make a huge difference in your takeoff performance, especially with a 65 horsepower engine like this one. And if you're curious, the NTSB didn't find anything wrong with the engine other than the fact that you're just not going to get the same performance when you have a higher density altitude. In addition to the density altitude, the biggest contributing factor to this mishap is the aircraft weight. Now their max takeoff weight was only 1,220 pounds and every reference I found said that the aircraft empty weight is about 720 pounds, but according to the actual recorded weight from 1991, this aircraft weighed 856 pounds, and I'm not sure why it's heavier than other aircraft, but if you take that and then you subtract the weight of the fuel and the oil, that only leaves you about 286 pounds left over for the passengers. But the problem is the Sun weighed 282 pounds and the Dad weighed 229 pounds, and that put them 225 pounds over their max takeoff weight. And I just can't imagine why the dad didn't do a weight and balance calculation before trying to take off when he knows that the two of them combined weigh over 500 pounds. Again, this is just basic pilot stuff. And I think this is the root cause for why they crashed. Because if they had done a weight and balance calculation, they probably wouldn't have tried to take off or the dad might have flown solo and they never would have stalled but we'll never know why they did what they did. And the best that we can do is try to learn from this debrief to prevent future mishaps. And if you did learn something from this video, then be sure to check out another one on the channel and I'll see you next time.